Maybe we should just all take a long, deep breath. Belt up shots. Mm. Ridiculous. I'm not going anywhere until we've had this out. What are you talking about? Come on, I know why you're really upset. It's this business with Tracy. I mean, this is what lads do at Ryan's age. They test the boundaries. Oh, I see. You shouldn't blame yourself. You are unbelievable, do you know that? My son's only been living with you two minutes and suddenly you're his flaming life coach. I took Ryan in as a favour. Oh, give over, Sally. You took him in so you could look down on me. That's not true. Not to mention a little bit of eye candy round your house, eh? Do you know what? You seriously need to get another fellow love because all this is a little bit desperate. How dare you? Do you know what? I don't have to stand here and take this abuse from you. You can stuff your job, I quit. Think you'll find, Sally. I've already sacked you. Then you better fire me as well. You what? You heard. Juliet, I'm warning I'm you. I'm sorry. You don't get to speak to a fellow worker like that. You were a vile to her. Out of order. All for one and one for all. Hang on a minute. You can't do this. Watch us. That's Crystal's. Tenth wedding anniversary. Looks like a good man. He was. Funny how things pan out. If you and I hadn't split up, we'd never have met. And all these memories would be somebody else's. But they're not, and that's what you get to keep. I suppose. Not a bad swap for all our heartache, eh? Sounds like you're more than broke even. Do you ever wonder, you know, what if? Occasionally. And? And I remind myself that certain questions are best left unasked. How are you feeling? Mm, still pretty rough. Is there any chance that we can postpone this conversation? Yeah. What's going on? I'll take a wild stab in the dark. Right, so we're back on that stupid kiss again. Marcus, I thought we'd closed it down. So did I until I flipped out last night. And you're blaming me for that? No, I'm not blaming anyone. I don't remember half of it, OK? All I know is that I behaved like an idiot and Aidan probably hates me. No, he doesn't hate you. He's just confused. Yeah, join the flipping club. Look, all I know is that I can't face him like this. Right, so you're just going to stick your head in the sand? Hiya. Hiya. Oh, hello, mate. Found your way home, I notice. You naughty boy. <laughs> Have I come at a bad time? Mm. No, no. Your time is perfect. Just like you. Come on, let's get you moved in. So what's the verdict? The place was packed. Yeah, with a bunch of freeloaders stuffing themselves on pastries and coffee refills. Do you know what? I actually think I've lost money. Sometimes you've got to speculate to accumulate. Mum, it was a total disaster. Afternoon. <laughs> Afternoon, Mary. What can I do for you? Oh, nothing. Uh, just pop by to offer my congratulations. Your new breakfast promotion appears to be a hit. Nick had to empty the till to fill it up again. Oh. Well, I, I'm just glad that you've embraced the idea of competition so enthusiastically. Bring it on. Rest assured, I will. Mum, why do you have to encourage her? Well, well, I just can't help myself. I mean, what can I say? That woman brings out the worst in me. Right, let's create some magic. Uh, hi, Mrs Weston, you're right. Do you mind if I just have a quick word with Kyla? Come on. What are you doing? She wanted a tint. I know that, I booked her in. So I thought I'd give it a go. Right, babe, I love the attitude, yeah, but for starters, using completely the wrong mixture. Mrs. Weston has mango intense, and that bottle's not even active air. Oh. Seriously, if you'd put this on her head, she'd come out looking like Nicki Minaj. Look, I'm not being negative, it's just not as easy as it looks, that's all. Fair enough. So are we all right? Mm-hmm. You back then? Yeah, just now. How was your meeting? Uh, yeah, yeah, very productive. 
With, um, Brian, wasn't it? And, uh, the other school governors, yeah. Odd, that. Because I'm sure I remember Brian saying he had a funeral to attend. I'm giving you a chance to come clean here, Ken. <laughs> Sorry. It is, you're not making any sense. I want to know where you've been and who with. <sighs> I've been with Wendy Crozier. I wish I'd never gone in for this pub of the year competition. I'm a bag of nerves. How come? It's this mystery judge. Am I bowling every fella who walks through that door? I don't do that anyway. Well, yes. But now it's no longer recreational. £12.10, please, love. Well, you never know. They might send a woman. No. A man drinking alone is less conspicuous. True. When I drink on my own, I'm always conspicuous. It's a case, really. Well, hope it works out for you, love. Shame you can't find a way to narrow down the field. Here we are. Oh, thank you, Beth. That was Beth. I don't think I was too hasty walking out, do you? Well, I think Michelle would argue that she'd already sacked you. What? I'm just establishing the facts. Look, it doesn't matter who has done what. Michelle crossed the line. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. You're right. Oh, aye, aye, we've got company. Aren't you not supposed to be working overtime? Yeah, uh, you'd best speak to Miss Connor about that. Uh, just tell me what happened. Sorry, Michelle, had a disagreement. She humiliated me in front of the entire factory. Why? Because I took pity on her son. And then she sacked her. So we worked out. You're on strike? Well, we prefer to think of it as a, um, as a timeout. In the first place, her name is now Mrs. Papadopoulos. She's married, then? Uh, was. Well, she's recently widowed. Oh, how convenient. Wendy is a fellow school governor. Oh, well, that explains your sudden calling. Look, I only learned of her existence after I'd applied for the post. Ask Brian. He'll back me up. He'll cover for you, you mean? Oh, it's ridiculous. Ken! You were at her house. I saw you, clear as day. You followed me. Oh, please. Spare me the self-righteous indignation. Well, this is beyond the pale. And lying isn't. And you weren't at the flying horse with Brian last night because I saw him in the Rovers. Now, are you going to tell me what's going on or not? There's nothing to tell. We had a meeting. Oh, really? You're sticking to that story, are you? What is the truth? Our relationship is strictly platonic. Then these cufflinks are not from her. They were gathering you dust. You make me sick. It's ancient history, Deirdre. Not to me, Ken. Not to me. Wendy Crozier. Oh, that is just beyond... I'm speechless. I feel like I'm in some sort of bad dream. Yeah, I'm not surprised. She must be a fossil by now. Well, from a distance, she didn't look it. Yeah, well, even so. Dad's scraping the bottom of the barrel. He reckons it's all professional and above board. Right. Do you believe him? I don't know. Well, in that case, you need to confront her face to face. Do what should have been done earlier. I just thought I'd give Ken a chance to explain himself first. Yeah, you've been very reasonable. Now's the time to be unreasonable. Thanks for listening, love. Give her hell. I intend to. <laughs> now, what is wrong with this picture? It's not my fault. Sally would disagree. <laughs> I spoke to her then. Mm. What happened? Well, I've a patronising me, Rob. You're talking about Ryan. She just thinks she's better than me. She always has done. And the others? Why did they bail? Misplaced solidarity. Look, if you're expecting me to apologise... Yeah, thought then... never occurred to me. Good. Sally needed sacking. She did. <clears throat> I mean, she did. Damn yeah. right. Without any provocation, she walked out during a shift, chucking a, a staff mutiny. If that isn't grounds for instant dismissal, I don't know what is. Unless, of course, there's something else I should know. <clears throat> All right. There might have been a degree of provocation. I, I, I might have overstepped the mark a bit. <sighs> All right, I'll apologise. You're the best. You think you're clever, you, don't you? Using reverse psychology. It worked, didn't it? I hate you. <laughs> 
Look, if, if it's any consolation, Sally's only jealous because you're better looking, mm. more successful, and you get to sit opposite me all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as for Ryan, you're the best mum in the world. Don't ever tell yourself different. Thanks. You're welcome. Now let's see you grovel. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a beer? Uh, yeah, go on then, mate. Cheers, pal. Hi. Sorry, the downstairs door was open. What are you doing here? Maria called me. I thought you two needed to talk. You had no right getting involved. This is none of your business. Aidan, last night was completely my fault. Your fault? Yeah. I, um, had a cancer scare recently. Oh, my God. No, don't worry. I'm, I'm fine. Everything was clear. But... Well, for a few days, it was it was really rough, and I put a lot of pressure on Marcus. He was there for me big time. Yeah, that is a top low right there, I'll tell you that. Yeah, and I just think everything built up, and he probably just needed to let off a bit of steam. Look, I'm not trying to justify it's what okay. happened, but... It's OK. Come here. This is why I'm crazy about you. <clears throat> what are you doing? Making a shopping list. £22 a beetroot. It's for the borscht. Come again. It's a type of Russian soup. And why are we making Russian soup? Because of the Russian evening. Uh, really? I heard the uh, Spanish evening was a great success. See? We've already made an impact. Yes, but it's Russian. We need another angle, Anna. The bistro wiping out our breakfast trade. Oh, you're making it sound like we're at war, Mary. It is a war. And come next week, it will be the Cold War. <laughs> Deirdre, you remember me. After all these years, I wish I could say I was touched. What do you want? Why was my husband here? You should ask him yourself. I have. Now I'd like to hear it from you. We met to discuss the new biomass boiler for the school. Really? Really. So if you're looking for a fight, you better get in line behind the Weatherfield Council Funding Committee. I, uh, I believe these are yours. They were just a birthday present. Stay present. away from him. He must have explained the situation. Stay away. This is your only warning. Ken was never the love of my life. The man who was died five years ago. Your point? My point is that I am not the same woman. You look the same, Wendy. And that's enough. Remember what I said. What are you going to say to Ken? Nothing. Rita. I'm staying well out of it, and so are you. What are you staying well out of? None of your business. She said that? I thought Sal was going to lose it. This carry on of yours with Ryan has really got a wound up. Uh, for your information, me and Ryan really care about each other. Sorry? And if Michelle's got issues, well, that's her problem. Yeah. Sorry, I'm late. Hello. Where's Deirdre? Uh, at home. Uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's got a headache coming on. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I just need to borrow my dad for a moment. You take the flaming biscuit. Oh, Deirdre's spoken to you, then. Talk about a hypocrite. The amount of grief you've given me over Ryan, and all along you've been seeing your ex-mistress. How many times do I have to explain myself? Wendy is a colleague, and that is the sum total of our interaction. Right. So why all the secrecy, the crafty visits to her house? You know, this is becoming incredibly offensive. Tough! Look, there's nothing going on. Right. Because if I hear otherwise, you're going to wish you'd sailed away on that other trollop's barge. He's all yours. Oh, not lively. Seconds out, round two. Sally, I was wondering if I could have a quiet word. Look, anything you have to say to me, you can say in front of everyone. You tell her. Here, here. Budge up. What do you think you're doing? Um, I'm just showing support for my fellow downtrodden brothers and sisters. You were saying? Ooh, what's the matter, Michelle? Has the cat got your tongue? Don't rise to it. You, belt up. Thank you, Rob. Right, well, first of all, no one's sacked, so your jobs are there if you want them. Well, I still think you owe Sally an apology. Yes, thank you, Julie. I was just getting to that. 
about earlier. I realise this is no excuse, but I was very stressed and I shouldn't have gone off on one. <laughs> well, you made me feel small. Yeah, I know. And it won't happen again. And I am truly grateful for everything that you're doing with Ryan. I really do mean that. Anyway, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Your mum's had a little industrial dispute. Oh, I really enjoyed today. OK. Yeah, I think we proper clicked. Husband and wife working in unison. <laughs> I'm definitely going to enjoy being your trainee. Uh, yeah, about that. Oh, and there's one condition. You can't go easy on me. When I step through that door, I'm staff. No special treatment. Oh, and also, I'm going to go back to college. Whatever it takes, I'm up for it. <sighs> Listen to me getting carried away. Uh, look, it's not that. Um, I think maybe it's best if you just uh, stick to doing beauty and nails for the time being. Sorry? Well, it's not a criticism of you. It's just we Gran coming back and Maria, well, hair-wise, the salon's pretty much sorted. You made me think... This was supposed to be a step up for me. Come on, it's not the end of the world. For you, maybe. I want more for us, David. I want more for myself. Look, Kylie, profits are down. That's all. Things are just a bit difficult. Difficult? Believe me, you haven't seen difficult. You should have offered to buy the round. Kay insisted. To be honest, I think he wanted some space. Uh, well, he's hardly been the life and soul of the party this evening. And that story about Deirdre having a headache sounded very unconvincing. Cheer up, it might never happen. I'm afraid it already has. Oops. <laughs> That'll be £9.15. You want my advice? Bin the jumper. You'll feel miles better. Oh, excuse me. Good evening, Rover's Return Public House. The first drink is just the beginning. How can I help you? Oh, Lancashire Leisure. Thank you very much for getting back to me. Yes, it, it's just a minor point, really. I was just going through the paperwork for Pub of the Year competition and I couldn't help but notice that we haven't been entered into the bed and breakfast section. Perhaps I should go and check on Deirdre. No, no, there's no need, I'm sure. Evening all. Oh, evening. How, how was the funeral? No, no, uh, excuse me, I just need to have a private word with Brian, school governor business. What's the matter? Deirdre's on the warpath. Oh, I suspected as much. She knows about Wendy. Knows what exactly? I thought you told me it was completely above board. Well, it is. But it's also extremely complicated. I'm sorry to have been bothered. I'm sure it'll come out in the wash. We should go and strike more often. <laughs> Militism does have its plus points. Hi. Is everything OK? Oh, I'm afraid those pigeons we discussed have come home to roost. What's with the soup? Oh, a colleague has died. He went to a funeral. Well, you look like you was very fond of her. Actually, I couldn't stand the woman. I, I, I couldn't help overhearing that Deirdre's on the warpath. Crossed wires, that's all. Nothing to worry about. Oh, there's that Luke again. What do you two know that I don't? <sighs> she told you about Wendy. I drove her to the house. What? They followed your cab. Who's Wendy? Wendy Crozier. Oh, goodness. Her name's Mrs. Papadopoulos now. I'm sure there's a perfectly innocent explanation. Yes, Dennis, there is. However, it's clearly wasted on my friends and family. So if you'll excuse me, I'd rather suffer this happy occasion on my own. Good night. <laughs> Man, never learn. Oh, you're proud of yourself. Wendy and I are practically front page news. Oh, well, you always did like to see your name in print. Yeah, well, you didn't tell me Rita was mixed up in all this. Oh. Must have slipped my mind. Yeah, and you allowed me to walk into an ambush? Yes. It's humiliating, isn't it? When you're expecting one thing and discover another. Well, if it's any consolation, you're not the only one who had a nasty surprise this evening. Yeah, what's that supposed to mean? I paid Wendy another visit. I have to hand it to the woman. She doesn't look a day older. Please tell me you didn't make a scene. No, I didn't, Ken. 
Because unlike you, I've still got some self-respect left. I just marked her card. Of course, she swears blind there's nothing going on. And that's because there isn't. Look, this is precisely why I wasn't able to tell you about her. Because I knew that your reaction would jeopardise everything. And by everything, you mean your precious job. This work I'm doing matters. My thoughts, my views count for something. And as a school governor, I, I, I can create a better future for Amy and Simon. Oh, you'll be breaking into song next. Diedrich, you can be as cynical and dismissive as you like, but I have rediscovered a part of myself that I thought I'd lost. And very attractive she is, too. Oh, it's impossible. You simply refuse to be rational. Oh, so I'm irrational now, am I? Now you're putting words in my mouth. Well, after your last speech, I doubt there's room. I'm pouring my heart out to you. And what about my heart? The lies hurt 20 years ago, and they still hurt. I deserve better. I always have. I want you to resign, Ken. Oh, please, Deirdre. I'm sorry. It's the job or me. more drama ahead for the Barlows this week as Tracy makes a huge announcement. Kate Ford, who plays her, previews The Big Shock at itv.com slash Corrie. The operating theatre is abuzz when Monroe faces a massive challenge and there are challenges elsewhere too. It's next on ITV One. <laughs>